Today we would be moving ahead and uh, looking at how self, the individual uh, plays an important role in this whole dynamics. No? Till now our understanding says that uh, there are uh, certain types of needs uh, which are important for human beings in terms of uh, helping him or her maintaining uh, the level of adjustment, maintaining uh, the, the uh, ingredients of uh, mental health. But in this whole process, study we also discussed that there are certain uh, know, uh, characteristics and many of these characteristics basically is an interplay between the individual and uh, certain uh, elements in the environment. Now, when individual becomes important, it is also important to understand uh, that the self of that very individual also acts as a determinant. Now, when you look at uh, the individual, you can think of three basic assumptions, the reality assumptions, the possibility assumptions and the value assumptions. So, when you think in terms of you know, striking balance between different types of needs, when you think in terms of uh, you know, having certain uh, physical, emotional, social uh, you know, uh, desired characteristics which would be uh, considered as uh, the denominators of uh, healthy development. Similarly, we have certain assumptions. Here, uh, we are trifurcating uh, the assumptions as reality assumptions, possibility assumptions and value assumptions. Now, reality assumptions basically you know uh, reflects the view of the things as the individual thinks they really are. Study you remember we had talked about the frame of reference. No? that there is uh, no a need for an adequacy in the frame of reference because individual will always look at others and uh, life events with respect to his or her frame of reference okay and in case uh, no this life experience or the new experience that one has doesn't fit into that frame of reference one would uh, no certainly derive certain degree of discomfort accepting such things therefore the very idea that uh, know your your perception of how things actually are okay of the kind of person you are okay and the nature of the world around you this constitutes the reality assumptions means for any given uh, thing for any given individual for any given group of individual for any given uh, no stimuli in the environment you have your way of looking at it and you say that this is how it actually is. Okay. Then you also consider that this is how you are and then you also you know interpret the world that this is how the world is. Okay. For you, this is how you have interpreted things and for you, this is what the reality is and there could be a difference okay, between what you consider to be a, a real representation of the stimuli of yourself and what others think of you and the same similar type of stimuli that you are uh, is now considering to be of a certain type. How much is the mismatch between uh, know, the perception of two individual will again uh, know, pose some type of obstacle in terms of uh, adjustment would require you to realign your thought your assumptions that is you know uh, inter individual type of situations. There could be intra individual type of situation where you find that your own reality assumption and the remaining two assumptions that we have not discussed. Okay. You might find that there is a certain uh, know degree of incompatibility between the two where once again there is a need for you to adjust. Possibility assumptions basically you know as the nomenclature suggests possibility assumption basically is the view of how things could be. Okay. So, the possibility that you search in terms of modifying it, rectifying it. Okay. The possibility that you think okay, uh, can be induced in uh, the situation or within yourself or within the group 
to modify certain things to change it okay. and then you also think in terms of the opportunity that it can give to you for your own personal growth and social progress. So, that is the possibility assumption. So, you know how things are and then you start thinking of is there a possibility of a change. Okay. If yes, then you try to modify it. Okay. In the process of modification, you all think either in terms of you know that this is how I would grow in the, pro in the process or you might think that this is how the community as a whole, the society as a whole would progress. Okay. Study you remember we were talking uh, uh, with reference to intelligence and creativity and uh, I made a statement that uh, you know, researchers show that uh, for proving uh, you know, certain facts and figures for mega concepts, okay, in certain uh, spheres of uh, knowledge, in certain domains, you need to be above certain age and in certain domains, you need to be much below certain age, because uh, that allows you, uh, you know, the possibility of thinking of all uh, you know, possible uh, or so called perceived weird ideas which usually somebody who is well informed would try to fit into one or the other frame. Possibility assumption, okay, uh, no, is too close to similar type of uh, uh, discussion that we had yesterday, where you know how things are, but you now start searching for a possibility of introducing some change. Uh, now, imagine certain situations, we will take you know, small examples and then we will try to extend it say uh, you go to the school for the first time and uh, within a week your parents uh, receive a report from the teacher that uh, the child probably has some problem because he or she cannot attend to uh, know what is being done in the class. Your uh, ward does not participate in the class activities. Okay. So, usually the process would be that teachers would before uh, know making uh, the parents know about it, the teachers themselves would try to find out is there a possibility of modifying it. If it is difficult or if their perception is that it is not possible, then they might report it to the parents that fine this is what we are struggling with. Okay. Now, there could be multiple ways of handling it. No? As a group of teachers or as a single teacher and as a one parent or as both the parents know uh, in at their own level or combined effort of both of them okay, to make the child uh, come up to the level that is expected in this school. That could be one possibility. The moment you think of this, you are basically thinking of certain changes that you think can be induced into the system, into the individual. Okay. One of the greatest scientists of this world Okay, was uh, no thrown out of the school. He was expelled because the teachers thought that uh, no, he had some intellectual deficit that doesn't uh, no help him uh, come up to the level of what the teachers teach in the class. Okay, the mother had to struggle a lot okay, uh, to uh, no pursue the teachers. That fine, I'll work hard with my son. You should allow him to continue in the school. But finally, the British schools did not agree to it. Okay. And then the mother decided that fine, uh, no, if the schools are not able to handle my kid and because I have delivered this baby, so let me handle the child. Okay. And the mother taught her child so well okay, uh, that one day this child came up to the level where the world now knows him as Newton. Now, Isaac Newton, uh, no, imagine a situation as a child, do not think of him as a great scientist, just think of him as a small child, where a set of uh, no, stakeholders, the teachers, they decide that fine, you are intellectually not capable of uh, meeting the need of this very school and hence, I do not see any possibility of any change in you and hence, you should be expelled out of this school. Okay. And then the mother thinks that fine, there is still a possibility of uh, no modifying the behavior and uh, she finally proves herself. Okay. What I am trying to say is that there could be no great degree of variance if you look at the real life cases. 
Okay. Of course, we have taken the most celebrated cases, but even in day to day life you would realize that uh, you know, many people have to struggle. You know. Many of you I am sure must have struggled at one point or the other, some of you even after qualifying JE, okay, uh, because of uh, the whole instruction uh, taking place in the foreign language. You know. This is not your mother tongue. The whole uh, demand that you learn a new subject okay, at a particular pace in a foreign language is too much of a demand. Okay. Now, imagine uh, you know, a situation of somebody uh, say who has come all the way uh, from south uh, of India okay, is given a room where he has uh, say a north Indian room partner. He is uh, you know, int uh, introduced to a mess where you have uh, you know, north Indian food stuff. Child, uh, the boy has or the girl has been uh, you know, staying away from the family for the first time in the life. So, first time you are in the hostel, okay, first time you are in this chill winter, you never knew what winter means, you only heard of it as a season. And then you are told at 8 morning, 8 o'clock the classes begins, it is chilled morning, you know that your friend is from North India, mother tongue does not match, taste does not match, preference of songs does not match, in the hostel the food does not match, in the lecture hall the mode of instruction does not match your taste. Too much of difficulty one would, uh, many of you must have experienced. Okay. If not all of them, all of us have experienced some of them. No? <clears throat> probably either in uh, one go or discreetly, you know, at different time you have different type of uh, demands against which you had to go. The importance of possibility assumption is that even though you are in a difficult situation, it allows you to think uh, that is there a possibility for me to modify certain things. Okay. I remember uh, somebody was uh, narrating this experience of one of uh, his wingmates here in the class that uh, he was uh, from a rural area in Rajasthan, had great difficulty okay, uh, speaking English, understanding English and had terrible time in the first semester. The boy who was explaining this story, narrating this story said that uh, me and many of our friends uh, were from the convent background and therefore, we were very, very conversant in English, very, very comfortable in this foreign language. Okay. And, uh, we could very easily make a distinction of uh, you know, our comfort level with English and his di great discomfort with English. And that boy started you know, uh, you know, watching uh, English movies, reading English books. Okay. The whole attempt was to improve English like anything and he said that after one year, okay, his level of English was far superior to us, although our entire education was from the convent background you just try to undo something that this is my deficit okay i'll overcompensate it okay towards the end of uh, this module we'll uh, talk about uh, certain types of mechanisms where we would be also talking about uh, no overdoing certain things no you just decide that fine this is what i lack so i'll definitely attain it and in that process your attempt is so vigorous that you over attain in that whole process this is of course, at the individual level, you are thinking in terms of what you can achieve, in terms of your personal growth. Think at a larger level, no? at a more macro level, okay. when you have a system at place and then uh, somebody decides that is there a possibility of transforming the whole society, is there a possibility of wiping out this type of a feeling, wiping out this type of a thought. Okay. Uh, imagine a situation when uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi would have uh, know, conveyed this idea that uh, we should uh, know, uh, try to get rid of untouchability. Okay. Right now, it might not seem so sound, but imagine in those days when there was a heightened degree of uh, this feeling in the society, somebody who searches for a possibility of change in the society and says that can we get rid out of it. So, uh, right from there to say somebody like say, uh, uh, Dayanand Saraswati for example, the man who at one point of time decides that fine, is there a possibility that society can think of the remarriage of the widows. Okay. Now, these were you know extremely, extremely deviant thoughts from the then social perspective. You know. 
but then you find that rest of the society is still you know very religiously follows the system. Here you have somebody who thinks that is there a possibility of a change. Now, you are not thinking of personal growth rather you are thinking in terms of the progress of the whole society. Okay. Uh, I am sure you must have seen this ad nowadays, I do not remember it is ad of one of the automobiles, uh, where a young boy uh, gets down of a bus in a what you call a rural area and then the tea shop keeper there says no that better you had gone to city to study and he says that yes I have completed my study and I have come back to the village. You remember that ad? and he says that uh, but people go from village to city and he said no, but I have come back from the city and then he says that this is the place where my call center would be and then there is a whole transformation of the village. This uh, you know small uh, tea shop owner becomes a rich man is well dressed and uh, very emotionally shares with the child that fine you have transformed the whole village. You know, this is a ad very small ad which comes I do not remember of uh, which product it is one of the automobiles I guess no? which basically allows you to you know conveniently move from one location the urban to the rural location. But one interesting hidden message there is that there is a great possibility of uh, transformation at the <coughs> rural level. No? that instead of having those big offices in the urban area have it in the rural area and people can you know stay in the rural those who are staying in the urban area can still you know commute to this belt to this uh, local locality uh, rural locality where the office is situated and they can go back. This is uh, uh, no, I will uh, no say that this is again someone who was visualizing this was also probably thinking of a possibility assumption. Okay. Now, reality assumption allows you to pers uh, perceive things in perspective no who is where is what is okay we are able to make that distinction with the help of our reality assumptions the moment you have the value assumptions coming into picture you start thinking so i now understand that this is what i am now that i understand that this is how things are is there a possibility of a change okay uh, say for example, IITs were uh, established to uh, know foster uh, technical education in this country and for long it was uh, know moving on the same lines when one of the government committees suggested that now it should start branching off into other areas besides engineering education. that committee's report no and few people uh, explained it one way few people tried to explain it the other way few people condemned it few people want try to justify it but what is very interesting is that you gradually realize that something which is established with a particular motive runs for a certain time a period of time and then you find there are individuals who would think that is there a possibility of modification remember anything that remains stable will start stinking no? from that point of view. No? So, you need to have a system which is dynamic which keeps on evolving over time. So, so is true for individual cases, so is true for uh, no, the, at the macro level the social cases. And then we come to the value assumptions. Now, these are you no know, the view uh, of the way people would start looking at things and would start uh, know demarcating things as good or bad right or wrong desirable or undesirable okay so these are all you know basically value oriented judgments okay by default whether you want it or not okay you would be classified as good or bad okay your uh, behavior would be class, uh, classified as right or wrong a uh, certain set of your reactions would be considered divided as and uh, looked upon as desirable or undesirable this is the truth okay the only interesting thing in terms of these assumptions are that you always have a mix of them it's not that no you have reality assumption in isolation possibility assumption in isolation or value assumption in isolation no these things will always combine together okay and this makes the story of the life very interesting. No? We will take couple of examples no, to see 
you uh, know when you add these three things in a given situation for different individual how things uh, know become very very different. Uh, I am not uh, know uh, promoting certain ideology, I am not promoting certain ideas, I am just trying to take real life examples. Right? Uh, one of uh, a medical practitioner from Madhya Pradesh, okay, who also happened to be uh, uh, no, the human right activist, was once uh, arrested by the police forces. Okay. The charges against him was that uh, he has been sympathetic to the Naxalites. The charges was that he has been extending services, uh, medical facilities to the Naxalites okay, and basically being sympathetic, having that uh, ideologue and those things. So, he was arrested. The local court had sent him to uh, jail, the high court also did not uh, give him bail and uh, this thing was hyped like anything in the media and it was not only the Indian media, it was the international media who was looking at it, because people considered that this is basically a violation of uh, the right of a citizen, okay, uh, being sympathetic or uh, know, uh, providing medical care is not a crime. Finally, this case uh, know, went up to the Supreme Court of India and uh, there was uh, know, this interesting way of looking at it. In all the three levels in the judicial system, a set of people who was uh, know, basically uh, from uh, the police side, the government side, they said that fine, once you start extending your expert services to a group which is anti-national, okay, your involvement with such people also makes you anti-national, this was one viewpoint. Okay. And this was uh, strongly and repeatedly suggested in the court of law at all the three levels, right from lower to the Supreme Court. There was a counter viewpoint, which said that uh, see, I as an individual uh, can uh, know be sympathetic to one ideology or the other, but I myself is not involved in anti-national uh, acts okay. and therefore, I cannot be clubbed together with the Naxalites. But what was very uh, interesting and why I am quoting this example is that we are talking with reference to self as a determinant. No? So, this person <coughs> says that uh, see uh, I am a practicing doctor, I have the license from the medical council of India, fine. When I look at a patient, I do not discriminate whether you are a Naxalite, whether you are from the police forces or who you are, your profession does not matter to me, who you are also does not matter to me. What matters to me as a professional is the remedy that is needed for the problem that you are experiencing. For me, okay, uh, it is basically the disease, for me it is not you. You could be a Naxalite, your disease cannot be a Naxalite. Now, think of uh, you know, uh, the whole way the person is looking at it. No? So, you try to explain yourself with respect to the reality assumption, who am I? I am a doctor. Okay. You, think, uh, you think at it from a possibility assumption, is there a possibility of providing your expertise uh, to all classes of people or would it be, would it be confined to only a small subset of people? Okay. And you say that fine, there are people who deviate from the government's viewpoint, who are fighting the government. Okay. But then there could be a possibility of providing medical care even to them, because I am looking at the diseased body, I am not looking at the individual. Okay. And therefore, you say that for you, my behavior could be undesirable, it is a wrong deed, but I consider it to be the most ethical act, because as a doctor, I am treating the diseased body. The diseased body, I treat the diseased body of the police forces, I also treat the diseased body of the Naxal, uh, uh, the Naxalites. Okay. 
what I am trying to say is that these assumptions the moment you put it and you take any any there are thousands and thousands of such situations the moment you put them together situation becomes extremely complicated. Okay. Because first you define yourself you define the context in which you decide to modify your own behavior or you demand modification in others behavior or you demand uh, no, uh, modification in the social system that is the possibility assumption and then you start looking at from the value assumption point of view whether this is right or wrong. Okay. Take the uh, very very recent episode no? a gang rape episode in Delhi large number of students who move to a certain location in Delhi which is otherwise considered to be the power center where most of the ministries and other other icons are there. Okay. Now, the reality assumption is that there has been so many cases okay, I am also a woman or I am also a man uh, okay, who have women in the family in the front circle. Okay. So, I define myself, I look at the situation, I look at my surrounding world and see this is how the uh, rate of uh, crime against women has increased <coughs> in the national capital and overall throughout the nation. Uh, this is what proves the inefficiency of uh, certain stakeholders in the government system and therefore, a large number of people uh, know come forward. Okay. You say that fine you know uh, we are now demanding that there should be a change in the system. All you are saying is that the system is at place and you see possibility of changes that can be introduced. You define yourself the reality assumption your possibility assumption that the system must change. Okay. Because the system is taking long time to change and uh, you do not trust the people who are supposed to uh, know, change the system, change the laws and the bylaws. Uh, you think that they will take more time or probably take much, much, much longer time and therefore, you start uh, know, applying pressure on them through this uh, mass protest. And then you have your value assumption that comes and you say that this act is completely justified. Okay. And then on the other side this person says that fine this is the line that we have drawn you should not cross this line. Okay. There are barricades put here you should not cross this line and if you cross it I have all right to use water cannons to use lati charge to use tear gases. I am sure you must have heard the debate that took place uh, around that time. No? The people on the other side of the line saying how justified the act was, people on this side of the line saying how unjustified this act was. Okay. And uh, there is nothing like a common type of a ground, no? you just have two bipolar views simply because the way you are uh, know, defining things, the way you are uh, looking for a possibility of a change and therefore, the way you are trying to make things value oriented is different. Okay. Now, imagine a situation if two such people or a set of such people have to live together, okay, there would be a great demand on you to adjust each, each of these individual and each of this group will have tremendous pressure on them to adjust according to the new social reality. Uh, uh, a negative example. Twice in our country, uh, it has happened many a times, but twice in our country uh, I can recollect that uh, after a certain set of mass violence, one section of the society decided to uh, know, live in a very, very different way. The first was 1984 uh, no, anti-Sikh riot. Very interestingly, I do not know if you have uh, read about it uh, in details. During the anti-Sikh riot in 1984, there were no selected places in India where the Sikh community was targeted. One way or one very interesting way of looking at it could be that it was largely economically prosperous areas. 
okay, because you know that the Sikh community is into business and they are prosperous businessmen. Hence, you uh, know that most uh, you know, what you call violent type of uh, behavior was seen by the crowd in these loca localities. Otherwise, in small, small places, small, small events took place. But for small again, I am saying from a perspective of somebody who is an outsider who did not experience it. Okay. Uh, a small act, what I say as a small could be extremely bad for somebody who personally experienced it. No? So, that also you should uh, understand. Now, after this uh, anti Sikh riot in 1984, uh, uh, very different type of alignment took place. In many cities in India, there were specialized colonies, where it will be largely infested by the Sikh people, with uh, no tall uh, barricades, main gates, very tall walls around it. So, you basically you know you are within a locality, you are trying to create an isolated pocket, where the density of such people who have been the victim of one type of a mob violence will stay together. Uh, Delhi for example, uh, it has a whole colony, the government uh, initiated you know, establishing that colony of people uh, who lost their family members during the 1984 anti Sikh riot. Uh, similarly, in uh, certain localities in uh, uh, certain areas in Gujarat also, you know, after uh, uh, this uh, Godra, post Godra riot. Okay. Again you realize that certain segment of the people, they decide to move <coughs> to certain localities, where they are in majority. And then you have that type of you know, defensive structures. Okay. Now, think uh, it from uh, know how at a certain point in time, you have to redefine who you are, how painful it could be how who you are okay how is the world around you you lived very happily for 25 years 30 years and then suddenly you know everything breaks down uh, there is a documentary uh, <coughs> sometime if i get time left on i'll show you a small visual from that uh, basically uh, sikh women elderly sikh women who was the victim of the Bombay riot, talks uh, in front of a camera and she says uh, that you know, we were uh, young little girls in 1947, when India and Pakistan was separated. There was a mass violence and we lost both our parents. Okay. We migrated to Bombay and now I think it was 1991, right? If I remember correctly, and she says that now it is 1991 when I am this old, and my husband has been stabbed. He is admitted in the hospital, and while she is narrating this, she is sitting actually in the corridors of the hospital. Okay. She does, doesn't say anything else, but the expression on her face you can see. You know. Now think of it from this point of view that we were discussing. You no. Know. That you, as a small child, okay, you had one way of what you are, who you are, what the world is around you. One major experience in your life, both the parents are killed. You redefine yourself. You re redefine the world around you. Okay, again after 45 years, you have to redefine yourself. You have to redefine the world around you. How 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 difficult it is. Okay. And therefore, you would realize that uh, literature in uh, mental health, literature in trauma psychology, literature in uh, clinical psychology is full of such people, who had extreme life experiences from this point of view, when the society was at unrest. Okay, we were talking about it you know, some time back, uh, that you need to have peace and tranquility in the society, if you want many a parameters to move on the positive side of the spectrum. The moment you have these disturbances and higher is the frequency, higher is the intensity, okay, more and more people will start deflecting towards the negative end of the spectrum. Okay. So, uh, it was all about these assumptions. Now, we come to uh, 
three types of anxiety okay, that has to also to do with uh, know these three set of assumptions that we talked about. We talked about reality assumption, possibility assumption and value assumption. So, here we have three sets of anxiety, reality anxiety, neurotic anxiety and moral anxiety. Okay. Now, reality anxiety would arise out of you know the danger or the threat that you perceive in the external world, okay. that there is a looming danger in your immediate environment and you are sensing it, you have perceived it. The example of the same uh, you know sick women that we were talking about right now, okay. uh, the whole anxiety comes out of the real life situation that she is encountering in life. Before we come to neurotic anxiety, okay, uh, those of you who have uh, not gone through or who are not familiar with the Freudian viewpoint, okay, uh, just go through uh, his whole theory of psychoanalysis and read the concept of eat ego and super ego. Okay. Uh, what Freud basically said was initially he said that uh, we have the unconscious the preconscious and the conscious structure of the mind okay and his whole assumption was that we have a nose he said that there is an um, basically he gave an iceberg analog saying uh, that nine tenth of our uh, no uh, experiences remain at the unconscious level okay one tenth is our conscious level and then there is a very thin line in between what is called, what he called as preconscious state of mind. Okay. Conscious you can understand know that whatever you are able to sense it okay. as of now that would be constitute the conscious experiences. Unconscious experiences would uh, comprise of those experiences which you had earlier in your life, but you are not able to you know recollect them even after the best of the effort that you can put in. Preconscious is said that basically you no know, conscious experiences will gradually be pushed down because of the incoming uh, uh, conscious experiences and therefore some of it will go at the preconscious level. No? So you have it, uh, you are not able to recollect, but then it can be detected using certain slips. Whereas uh, conscious you can very easily recollect. Unconscious, he again said, no, that there are. There are ways of uh, no, uh, uh, even knowing the elements of the unconscious mind. For preconscious, he said that there could be certain slips, like slip of the pen, slip of the tongue, okay. and these slips will reflect the preconscious state of your mind. Okay. You are speaking something and suddenly you had a slip instead of saying something else, you came forward with the other word and say, sorry, 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 and then you uh, know, re spell other word. Freud says that the initial word which actually is an outcome of a slip of the tongue reflects your inner feeling. The modified version that you give forward is basically a socially desirable outcome. Okay. Uh, similarly, slip of pen you wanted to write something else, but wrote something else. Okay. And uh, a beautiful example you can find in the book introduction to psychology by Morgan King and Scopler, where in the chapter motivation you find a, a letter written by a mother to uh, her son, uh, where she uh, know wishes good, uh, she extends her good wishes to her son after he gets married to a young girl. Mother somehow did not approve of uh, this marriage, and therefore, throughout the letter, wherever no rest of the no words were spelled correctly except congratulations no all congratulations had spelling error okay and the errors were random <coughs> okay so if you uh, no write a wrong spelling could be that no you have probably uh, no you are mistaken in terms of what the spelling should be but if you performed random errors in the spelling of congratulation then uh, it's conveyed something at this case later on came because the mother had uh, later on developed some other complications and in order to understand the nature of the case and the gravity of the case, the origin of it, 
Okay, finally, these letters were deciphered where this is how the psychologist came to the view that the mother child relationship is basically the origin of the problem. Okay. Unconscious Fred said that no, uh, he, he is, it is his sentence where he says no, that the dreams are the royal road to unconscious. No? So, Freud in fact said one of the his uh, Freudian technique is interpretation of the dreams, where the content of the dream is analyzed to find out the content of the unconscious mind. Okay. And of course, he later on introduced hypnosis as a technique to extract information from the unconscious mind. <coughs> we are very quickly uh, you know, uh, browsing through it. If you want to read it in details, uh, read the books, you will find fantastic description there. Later on, Freud uh, know, revised it and he uh, came forward with uh, again a uh, three structure model, where he talked about eat, ego and the super ego. He said that these three structures, okay, they guide our behavior and they themselves are driven by three different principles. Eat is governed by pleasure principle. Eat by pleasure principle means I want it, it pleases me and therefore, I would love to have it. Ego is uh, no, driven by reality principle. So, ego will always take into account where am I, who are the people around me, what will happen if I do this, what will happen if I do not do that. So, all such calculations uh, the ego will do. So, it is in touch with the reality and then super ego which is uh, no, driven by morality principle all do's, do's, uh, don'ts, right, wrong, good, bad, all type of moral judgments. Freudian theory says that eat and the super ego, they usually you know, run in contrast, you know, because one works on the pleasure principle and other works on the morality principle. And it is the responsibility of the ego to look at the reality and strike balance between the needs of your eat and your super ego. Even for a small, small thing it happens, okay. but then this is a major challenge that one experiences every moment in life, but all of us are successful striking that balance. Say for example, uh, you see a good ball pen in the hand of a friend and you think oh very good, I should have it. Okay. The it will ask you to have it immediately. Okay it is not worried about the means that you adopt to have the pen. It could be stealing, it could be forcefully uh, you know, snatching it. Okay. Uh, super ego tells you that no, it is wrong, how wrong it is no, that even at this stage you are thinking of you know, stealing a ball pen. You remember in class 2, you had done it for a small sharpener. That type of uh, you know, moral anxiety it will induce. And then ego strikes a balance and he says that fine, uh, maybe that uh, when the shop opens here in shop C, I will go and see if this pen is available. Okay. Now, the uh, later on if you go into the details of uh, no pathological behavior, you would realize that over uh, no satisfying the need of the eat or over satisfying the need of the super ego, both are equally dangerous. Okay, you have to strike a balance and that is your skill okay. and that is the whole story why we are studying this uh, you know, psychology of adjustment. Fine. So, we come with that introduction, we come back to neurotic anxiety. Now, neurotic anxiety are caused by uh, the impulses that threatens to break that control mechanism. No? Again, coming to the back to the world of advertisements, no? control kare to kaise, you remember that ad. So, you are trying to put a barrier that no, no, no and you realize that your impulses are overwhelming, it is about to surmount the obstacle that you are putting, the control mechanism that you are putting at place. Okay. Now, once you realize that you are incapable of controlling your desire, you come forward with the behavior which invites punitive measures okay. and that is the source of neurotic anxiety. Okay. And then comes the moral anxiety, uh, where either it can arise out of a real situation, it could be a contemplated action, which is in conflict and where you start uh, know feeling that what you did was not good, not right. And gradually it makes you develop a sense of guilt. Okay. 
truly speaking it is very difficult no say if you blame me i can very well defend myself all of us are good at it but imagine a situation where your inner self starts blaming you you are defenseless you cannot uh, you know satisfy your own inner self and the guilt that comes out of it the quantum of it is so 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 huge that people who have this thing large majority of them gradually sink down okay they need uh, assistance to regain their uh, normal state okay so we would continue with this uh, next time